The final topic that we'll discuss in this module is the Query Extender. Now this is a control that was made available in ASP.NET 4 and it provides a way to kind of abstract out your filtering features from your link data source or your entity data source regardless of which you use and put your where clauses, your order buys, or even search, search expressions into one little nice place. What's nice about it is by moving that functionality out you don't have to know what the underlying data source is so whether it's entity framework or link to SQL or even something else in the future you can do this query extender with filters and not really have to know anything about what's going on behind the scenes and it'll still work to do the filter for you so it allows you to kind of reuse things across different potential data sources so the query extender as I just mentioned it filters data uh, it can be used currently with link data source and entity data source. Now that may change in the future, but that's where we're at right now. It makes it so you don't have to put the explicit where clause into the data source control. And it basically allows different views of data to be shown. So an example is shown here. And we have an entity data source with an ID of EDS customers. Now you'll notice down here in the query extender, it has a target control ID. The target control ID is what is the entity data source or link data source that we want to target and extend in essence. So in this case, we're going to use what's called a search expression. Now there's different types of expressions. There's order by expressions and property expressions and search expressions and some others. A search expression is uh, interesting because it allows us to search one or more fields based upon some specific data. So in this example, we're going to search the contact name field for the search type contains and then we're going to get the value for that contact name from the txt filter, a text box. And that would allow us to then do a contains or you can even do starts with or you can do ends with. So it provides three options there and then you can even specify if it's case sensitive or not uh, when you're working with it. So the other one I'm going to show in the demonstration is the order by expression and the property expression. Those are two of several that you can use within the query extender to basically work with a single entity or link data source and then extend it or filter or sort very, very easily. So let's take a look at how we can use it. Let's take a look at how we can use the query extender in this ASP.NET Web Forms application. So right now, when we run this, this is based upon a demo I did in the previous section. We have a dropdown with salespeople. I can pick those and filter, but the filtering code is actually in this bottom data source. So if we go to the source there, there's my where clause, and you can see we have a where and an order by. Now, there's nothing wrong with that per se, but if I'd like to leave the entity data source alone, I can extend it with a query extender and have it drive the filtering feature. So I'm going to strip out all that stuff there. So now if we were to run it, it would just always show every customer uh, regardless of the salesperson that was selected. So to extend this and to actually move out the query functionality into a separate control that its goal in life is to filter, I'm going to add a query extender here. And we'll give it an ID. We'll just call this customer's query extender. And then I have to say, what is the target that this query extender is going to, in essence, extend? Well, what's it going to target for filtering? Well, it's going to be this guy. So you'll see there's this target control ID. And I simply give it the, the entity data source or the link data source that I want to extend. Now inside of here, I have a lot of different options on what I want to extend. So some of these are appropriate for more standard web forms like we're doing, and some are used for something called dynamic data. A good example of that would be these dynamic filter expressions. Okay, you're not going to use that in this scenario right here. Uh, if you also come in, there's a control filter expression that's also used for dynamic data. But what we can use, we want to filter based upon the value selected in the dropdown list. So that's called a either search expression or property expression. Now let me show a search expression. We're not going to use that one here, but I want to show it really quick because it's pretty useful. Um, we can actually go in and give it a search type of contains, ends with, or starts with. So if you've done a SQL query before where you use the percent symbol to say starts with or ends with, 
uh, or you can use that for contains if you put it on both sides of a word, then we can do the same type of thing with a custom search expression. And that makes it really nice and easy, whereas with the where clause up here, that's actually quite a bit more difficult to do. Uh, using the search expression though, it's very flexible. I could say, for instance, where it you know ends with some particular value, and then I can come in and get that value even from a control or a cookie or whatever I'd like there. So that's what a search expression can do, is allow us to have a little more flexibility on how we search. Now in this example though, I'm going to use a property expression. And the property expression is very simple. You simply say, okay, well, where do I want to get the value for this property? And what's the name of the property? Well, the name of the property I want to filter this by is salesperson. So we'll come in and we'll do a control parameter for our property expression. The control ID is going to be our drop down list. So I'm going to grab that guy right there. And then really all we have to do other than that and say what is the property based on that drop down list value that's selected, what's the property from my data source that I want to filter on and that is salesperson. And that's it. I'm done and that's how easy it is to work with uh, the control parameter and use that within a property expression. So now what's going to happen is because the query extender is attached to our customer's entity data source, this property expression is going to be used to do the filtering. So we can kind of abstract out the code that filters outside of this guy. And we could technically use it in multiple ways, that means, uh, because you can also programmatically work with the query extender. So let's go ahead and save and run this. And you'll see I have uh, David 8 right now. So let's see if it worked right off the bat. We'll come over to our salesperson. You'll notice they're all David 8 down this column. Now let's go ahead and do another filter here. Let's do this last one, shoe 0. And you can see shoe 0 is now filtering. So really what we've done is just moved out the query functionality from the any data source. Now if all you were going to do is a simple where clause, you could certainly just do it right here. But there's actually a little less code involved. Uh, I can do multiple queries in here as well. If I have multiple parameters I want to filter on, not just salesperson, but also maybe last name or something, then I can do that as well. So that's an example of how we can use the query extender to do a filtering operation. Now we can also do order buys. So previously up in the entity data source, I had this order by property and I said IT dot and I gave it the name of the uh, property there. Well, if we'd like to use a query extender for filtering, we might as well use it for sorting as well, and that's easy to do. We can come in and we can do an order by expression, and this one's very simple. Simply say the name of the field. We'll say we want to sort by last name, and then come in and say the direction. Now we can do ascending, descending. Let me just show descending, so we start from kind of Z back down to A, and that's it. Uh, makes it very easy to work with. So if we run this now, you should see that our records are now sorted by last name, and you can see it is descending. Or likewise, I can go ahead and switch that around. And it'll do that for every item. You can see we have V, M, L, K, so it looks like it's working properly there. So that's an example of how we can use the query extender to filter by properties or to do order buys or I showed a little bit on how you could use a search expression to do starts with, ends with, or contains.